During his coverage of the 2020 Masters Snooker Tournament, the BBC released its Shot of the Championship competition that looked at the best shots from this year's event. But what actually is the most difficult shot when you recreate it in real world conditions? Are all the shots as difficult as they actually look? And is it actually possible to recreate all of them? Of course, what I'm looking out for here is how many attempts it takes me to recreate these shots and which is the most difficult to recreate. Welcome back if it's your first time watching one of our videos and it's fantastic to have you here. So let's begin with Judd Trump and his first round match against Sean Murphy. After just clinching the fifth frame, it didn't look like Judd had a pot on at all until he found this length of the table fine cut. And it's not until you see this shot from the right angle that you can really appreciate how good this cut actually was. The good news is though, all I've got to do to get this right is cut the ball at the correct angle. Unfortunately, that's a lot more difficult than it sounds. The fact that there's nearly 12 foot between the red I'm playing and the pocket means I have to be incredibly accurate with this one. I was also trying to cannon the second red into play, but I just kept striking the white very slightly too low. Even though the frame was over at this stage, that's a difficult shot because the red has a hell of a long way to travel. To prevent Judd from running away with the match, Sean had to complete a clearance and unfortunately he left himself very straight on the blue and had a difficult shot to get to the pink. This type of shot really isn't too difficult when you've got the right angle and you're playing it at a slow enough pace, but like Sean I wanted to get right back across the other side of the table, getting the white at least past the blue spot and this extra pace started to cause problems. Even if you got exactly the right angle, just a trace aside here can mean you'll miss the jaw by one side or the other. I didn't get perfect position on this attempt as I landed a little bit straight on the pink, however as I managed to pop both the pink and the black, I was happy enough with the result. That was actually a harder one than you'd think because it's not too difficult to screw back to the jaw, but you've actually got to play it with a lot of pace to get back across the table again. Sean's confidence improved dramatically after that frame and actually went on to win the match fairly comfortably. Joe Perry now with not only a very good pot on the yellow but also this very accurate positional shot to get between these two reds. If this shot wasn't already difficult enough for me, it turns out it wasn't actually possible on my table. Because when Joe played the shot it looked like as long as he potted the yellow he had a natural angle to get onto the two reds. But unfortunately I do not, not because I haven't positioned the balls in the right place but as I'm explaining here before the sound broke, the newly constructed steel block cushions that you see professional players use on TV actually slide more than a traditional table. And that means it naturally widens the angle, especially off this cushion, in exactly the same way as if you put side spin on the ball. And that's making it very difficult to play this shot. And all that means I actually have to pop the yellow with left hand side to get exactly the right angle to hit the reds. And as I discovered after just playing a few shots like this, to make it even harder I actually had to play it with nearly maximum left hand side if I wanted to get anywhere close to getting the cannon. The left hand side also slows the cue ball down off the cushion so this means I also have to play it at almost full power so I was very happy to get it as quickly as I actually did because it's a very small gap to find. That was difficult because of the side spin I actually had to put on the ball. When you play a shot in that direction it's easiest to put that side spin on the shot for a number of reasons. It's sometimes described as outside spin and I've made a video that's in the card all about it. So on this shot if I play it with right hand side it doesn't make it that much more difficult because of the way the cue ball approaches the ball and widens the angle for you. When you start playing it to go that way with the same side spin the shot becomes a lot more difficult and side spin then becomes a lot more tricky. Although the frame was already won by this stage it did show what good form Joe Perry was actually in as he comprehensively beat Ding Xun Wei in this match. All the way out in Russia we have Noz watching us who is from Taiyumen City. 
Stephen Maguire was struggling in this match against Neil Robertson 5-1 down when this shot really caught people's attention. Unfortunately though it's one of those shots that I have absolutely no chance of ever replicating so I thought instead I'd try and explain why it happened and in particular how the red managed to jump back into the pocket. Hitting the back of the pocket and jumping back on the table is something the ball rarely does. I can only think of a handful of times it's actually happened to me. So I've stuck a piece of cardboard in the pocket and I'm trying to get the cue ball to jump back out with a lot of spin on it. I decided it's probably best to use an old cue ball for this shot. And it wasn't too long before it started jumping out at about the right angle and I was getting it to spin on the cloth. Oh yeah, it stopped. There we go. But although the red jumped out of the pocket in exactly the same way, it doesn't explain how it got that spin on it, and for that we have to look at something a little different. You'll know if you've played enough snooker, when any ball comes into contact with the jaws of the pocket, it can impart quite a bit of side spin onto the ball. And that's what I think happened to this red. Instead of hitting the back of the pocket, it seems to have run round the jaws, and that's how it got its spin. But does this mean I can replicate the shot with the cardboard in the pocket? Miraculously, Stephen not only won that frame, but also managed to level the score up at 5-all, where this excellent green got him the chance to clear up and win the match. This shot is played with stun and left hand side to help swing the cue ball around the cushions, and it's a shot that's fairly commonly played by snooker players, so I was a little bit disappointed how many attempts it actually took me. What actually made this shot more impressive was actually the time in the match it was played. Even though this is the sort of pot that a snooker player would be used to, I think this is the best pressure pot of the tournament because Stephen had worked hard to get back 5-all and if he'd missed that, it would have probably ended his tournament right there. But it didn't and it meant he was able to go from 5-1 down to completing a match winning break. In this next shot, David Gilbert accurately swerves the white between the blue and the pink, allowing him to play this telling safety shot, and keep the pressure on his opponent, Mark Allen. This shot needs exactly the right amount of side spin. Too much and you'll hit the pink, not enough and you'll catch the blue. This was a really strange one to include because although Dave played the safety shot well, I'd be really disappointed if I didn't actually hit the red. And the swerve may have looked good, but it was a fairly basic shot. Whatever you think about the shot, Dave was still able to pull off a fairly dominant win against Mark Allen. Jack Lazowski now with an impressive long screw shot. After struggling with similar shots in previous videos, I was desperate to prove people wrong who said these types of shots weren't actually possible on my table. So I've been practicing queuing straight and getting maximum backspin on the ball with Chris Henry's The Bulls. This was really helping as I was queuing the ball straighter and getting a lot more reaction than I normally would. The goal being to pot the red and screw back for the blue. Although my table's nowhere near as grippy as what you'd see on TV, it is one of the most reactive tables that I play on. So I was desperate to get something that resembled as close as possible the shot Jack Lazowski played. It's getting there. It's getting there. Even though I was queuing a lot of these shots straight, I only have a finite amount of cue power, and unfortunately it was nowhere near enough to get the right side of the blue. However, I did manage to get fairly close. I know I said I wanted to get this side of the blue spot, but I've thrown my entire body weight behind that and I've caught it perfectly. And I don't think I can actually do any better than that. So unfortunately, that's the best I can do at this stage. And at least I'm on the blue. Unfortunately for Jack, this was a rare highlight in what seemed to be one-way traffic going in the opposite direction as he was comprehensively beaten by Kyron Wilson. 
but Daniela has currently beaten everybody else to a pin in Dallas, in Texas, in the United States of America. Mark Williams here using a lot of side spin to get into the reds off two cushions and manages to find himself in position. This shot is played with a small amount of stun and the right amount of right hand side. It's very easy to put too much and too little and miss the pack on either side here. The goal is to go into the reds as hard as possible and hope you finish on one and when I finished on a shot I could actually pot I was happy enough with it and managed to get on the blue. Another strange one because the pot and the cannon are pretty straightforward. It was incredibly difficult to get on a red, but I'd be very disappointed if I didn't actually get the cannon. And a lot of where you land there was just down to complete chance. Unfortunately, this contribution from Mark was nowhere near good enough to allow him to get anywhere close to the eventual tournament winner, Stuart Bingham. Sean Murphy here with a key shot to win him a vital frame against Joe Perry. This is another well executed pressure pot. There's a natural angle here to run the white round two cushions, it just requires you to pot the ball at the right pace with a small trace of side spin. This is a fairly tough pot to judge, especially as the black is just a little way down from its spot. And on the first shot, I just slightly under hit it, so on the second one, I hit it a little bit harder and managed to get on the yellow. This is another good shot under pressure and I was actually pleased to get it second time, but again, not too difficult. Clinching this frame put Sean in a dominant position where he was easily able to close out the match. John Higgins now with a tough pot and not only does he manage to pot the black, he also managed to play the cue ball all the way around the table and leave himself in almost perfect position on a red. The red I'm bridging over here makes it very difficult to pot the black at this speed with a small trace of side spin. I actually didn't notice but I got slightly too much side on the ball and came the opposite side of the blue to John, but I still finished on the correct red. This is another example like we had in the last video we did like this, where I would never have thought to play the shot like this if I hadn't seen John do it already. And once I actually had seen him do it, it made the shot a lot easier to understand how to play and actually play. However, despite this, John would eventually lose out 6-3 to the inform Ali Carter. I realised this was more about showing the most extreme shots from the tournament rather than deciding whose shot was best. Although there was a couple of good pressure pots on the list, I definitely think this shot from Joe Perry was the most difficult because it required a very accurate positional shot and a good pot at the same time. And for me, having to play it with a lot of left hand side, that just made it even harder. And although I couldn't screw back the Jack Legowski shot, I think this was definitely the hardest shot for me personally to play. However, feel free to let me know what you think. And if you want to see more about the best shots from tournaments recreated, then why not have a look at our videos of last year's UK and World Championships. And remember, don't just watch, play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.